Hello and welcome to another SmartSafe ADAS calibration video. Today we have a 2018 Subaru Crosstrek and we'll be calibrating the front EyeSight camera. We'll be using our X431 ADAS Pro Plus calibration frame along with our iSmartLink 801 display tablet. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll start by inserting the VCI into the vehicle's OBD2 port. Next, we'll go ahead and key the ignition on to position two. We'll click on ADAS calibration. We'll click on North America. And then we'll choose Crosstrek, because that's the model we're working on. And next we'll go ahead and start the ADAS system scan. So we'll click on ADAS system scan. This is going to scan all of the ADAS uh, modules that are equipped on this vehicle. So we'll hit start scanning. Currently this vehicle does not have any DTC or fault codes. So everything will show up here in green. Um, however, if you are working on a car that has issues, then that would show up here. So here we'll go ahead and click on the report and this will be in preparation to uh, generate the pre-repair report. You can see here under report type, it's pre-repair. Here you can add additional information such as the customer name, license plate number, any kind of remarks you like to add. You can even add photos. There's a button here for that. The uh, tablet has a built-in camera, so you can add photos if you wish. We'll go ahead and hit on OK. And this is an example of what the report would look like. Here we can see that in the pre-repair, we don't have any faults. So we'll click on save. And we'll hit the back arrow. And next we'll go ahead and go to ADAS calibration function. And we'll go ahead and start calibrating the front camera. We'll choose camera all adjustment mode. Now what we need to do is we need to put the vehicle into the calibration mode. So how that's done is we'll turn the ignition off and then we'll turn it back on. And what we need to do is uh, hold down the buttons for pre-collision break off as well as lane departure. Uh, now this can vary from model to model. So um, some of them have a switch up here on the, on the headliner right behind the mirror. That's the way it is on this cross track. Uh, other, other trims may have um, the calibration buttons um, on a soft switch or on the entertainment display. So that's one thing to keep in mind that you could have different, um, you might have a different trim. So you'll need to locate where those switches are going to be. So in our case here, we'll switch the ignition on. And then within 10 seconds, I need to hold down these two buttons up here. But we'll go ahead and click next. And as I'm holding these buttons down, we'll wait till the next screen comes up. And once the next screen comes up, I'll go ahead and release. All right. The next thing we're being asked for is to select which calibration frame we're using. So in this case, we're um, demonstrating on the ADAS Pro Plus. So I will select that. And the next thing that we're going to be asked is which target we're using. So the LEM0115 comes in two different versions. Uh, there's one that has the white background and one that has the black background. In this example here, we'll be using the one with the white background. So that's target A. So I will go ahead and select that. Okay, the next steps are all going to be performed outside on the calibration frame. We'll start by resetting the device and we'll move forward from there. Now there are three fine tune adjustments that can be made on this frame. First is the fore and aft. You can slide it forward or you can slide it back, but we're gonna be resetting everything to the default. So we'll place it right there in the center and then we'll lock it down. Next is the yaw or parallelness of the frame. And we will adjust that with the knob here. And this is our indicator here for center. And last, we have our side-to-side -side motion. This is the adjustment knob here on the right, 
and our indicator is located right here. The next step is to install the rear wheel ranging panels. We'll go ahead and start here on the passenger side. The important thing on this is to make sure that we have our level indicator bubble centered here. And then we have another bubble indicator for the panel itself located here. And we just want to make sure those are both level. And we would repeat this step on the driver's side as well. The next step is to place the ranging panel at the front wheel and we're going to place it at the center of the hub. So with all the ranging panels in place, we're now ready to set the distance of the frame from the vehicle. So we'll go ahead and turn on our range finding laser and we'll have that pointing to the ranging panel that we placed in the front uh, wheel hub. And then we'll turn on our central laser to get the vehicle as center as possible. So next we'll go ahead and move the um, frame back to 4,000 millimeters from that ranging panel distance. Currently we're at about 2,500. So we'll go ahead and pull the frame back. And there we're at about four, a little bit more there, and we're at 4,000. So next we'll go ahead and make sure that we stay as center as possible so that we can go ahead and parallel or, or correct the yaw portion of the frame. The next step is to go ahead and level out the frame. So using our bubble or spirit indicators here on the top, We'll go ahead and make the adjustment. Looks like we are just a little bit off here, fore and aft. So we'll make that adjustment by turning the casters. And looks like we're centered now. The next step is to adjust the parallelness or yaw uh, of the frame to the vehicle. And this is performed by looking at our two uh, range finding lasers that are on each side of the frame. And the lasers are gonna be pointing back to the rear wheel range panels that we installed earlier. So currently we're at 6675 here on the right side or driver's side of the vehicle. And as I pan over here, you'll see the ranging panel and the laser dot on the panel itself. So that's a distance of 6675 millimeters and we wanna match that to the driver's side as well. With the parallel uh, adjustments made, we wanna go ahead now and center the frame uh, back to the vehicle center. So we'll go ahead and adjust using our left-right movement. And here we would just need to go a little bit over to the left side to get back to center. So I'm just turning the dial and getting it back to center. And looks good right there. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. With all the frame adjustments made, we're now ready to go ahead and lock the frame down. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock the casters in place. And then I'm gonna go ahead and place the target uh, onto the frame. And we'll double check all of our settings again, just to make sure that we are center. I'll turn off our central laser and remove it. Flip the mount up. So we'll be ready to place our target. We'll latch it down on both sides here. Lock this side mount down. And lock the other side mount down. So the target's ready to go, and we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. Now the last step before we calibrate is to go ahead and adjust the height of the calibration frame. So the specification calls for the uh, target to be at 1260 millimeters. So I'll go ahead and turn on our height laser here, and I'll go ahead and bring the stand up to 1260 millimeters. And with that, we're ready to calibrate. So with the calibration frame all set up, we're ready to go ahead and perform the calibration. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on calibration. We'll hit okay here. 
And it looks like we've got a 96% accuracy rate on our static calibration. So it's telling me now to go ahead and cycle the ignition off and wait for 10 seconds. Okay, I'll go ahead and hit OK. And we have a camera adjustment uh, completed message, so I'll hit OK. It's asking me to turn the ignition switch back on. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So now we're, uh, it's letting us know that we can go ahead and perform the dynamic calibration here. Uh, again, this is just giving us some messages here about what we need to do to set that up. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. And again, this is just telling us uh, that we need to be at least 25 to 30, uh, 40 miles per hour uh, driving on straight roads as much as possible with lane markings. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. And here it's being, we're being uh, asked one more time to go ahead. Do you want to go ahead and start the uh, dynamic calibration? So here I would go ahead and press OK. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, start the video again uh, once we get out on the road. Okay, welcome back. We're ready to go ahead and do the dynamic calibration portion of the, uh, of the calibration steps here. So we're still here in our 2018 Subaru. So uh, we're here back at the tablet and it says, do you want to start the automatic adjustment, um, which is the dynamic portion. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And then this is going to give us um, some status here. Uh, notice we have a zero, zero on the automatic adjust status. We want to, well, we have to drive until we get a status of 0F, 1F, 2F, or 3F. That means that we've completed that, um, the dynamic portion. Uh, just so you can see here, though, we have additional um, status indicators here, like lane recognition status, as well as uh, the distance from the vehicle that you are in front, that's in front of you. So we do want to keep space uh, from the vehicle in front of us so that the uh, cameras, the eyesight cameras have a good clear view of the road. Um, one thing I didn't mention earlier was that because we're doing the dynamic calibration and we're driving now, uh, I don't have my Wi-Fi in my shop anymore, so I'm going to have to use my hotspot uh, from my mobile. So I've already got that uh, paired with my tablet here. So we're all set to go. So I'm going to go ahead and start driving and we'll wait to see when this status indicator here for automatic adjustment status uh, goes from the zero zero value to one of these uh, zero F, zero one F, two F or three F uh, status changes. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So once again, we're just looking for uh, you know, the straightest possible roads you might have in your area. I know for for some areas, it's going to be a little difficult to do that. Um, also, uh, well-defined lanes, uh, preferably a three-lane road that has a center uh, lane that has lines on both sides. All right, clear. And also, depending on the time of day, uh, you want to be careful of the sun and how it's reflecting on the uh, windshield. So, um, you know. Again, preferably drive uh, the opposite direction of the way the sun is facing, if possible. So again, you can see our road over here. It's nice and straight with uh, uh, clearly defined uh, lines. So this would be an example of a, a perfect road uh, to use for calibration. As far as my speed, I'm keeping my speed roughly around 40 miles per hour. Looking down here at the tablet, I have a status change now of 0, 04, 0 C, So we'll continue driving along this road here until we get a change to, um, again, one of the F values. Okay, it looks like we've reached zero F. So we'll go ahead and head back to 
our shop and we'll close out this process. Okay, so now that we've completed the dynamic pour calibration here, we'll go ahead and uh, hit OK. We'll go ahead and say save the ADAS report. Hit OK here. And here we'll see that we've got our success on our calibration. So we'll go ahead and run another scan. We don't have any codes, so we'll go ahead and generate our post repair uh, report. So under report type here, we'll select post repair. We'll add in our original pre-repair, and as well as our diagnostic scan. So hit OK, OK, and this is our completed report. All right, so this completes the uh, static and dynamic calibration on the 2018 Subaru Crosstrek. We hope that you found the video helpful, and we look forward to seeing you at the next one. Bye for now.